my name is Amy I'm the furniture painter here at flip it furniture today I have this dresser that I got from a friend of the family for free it's already been painted the top of it so I thought I'd take the opportunity to show you all the steps I take in removing sanding and refinishing the top of a previously painted dresser now let's flip it I want to know what is underneath all this paint is the top damaged? Are there burn marks or water marks? Are there tons of scratches? The only way I'm going to find out is by removing the paint. So I'm using citrus strip. I use a pretty good amount. I only have a little bit left in my bottle, but just enough for this top. I apply it using just an old brush and I can wash it out of my brush later. Um, but don't use a good brush. Use something that's old and that you might want to throw away pretty soon. And then I wrap it with some plastic wrap. The reason I do that is because I want to keep as much moisture as possible. I don't want my citrus strip to dry. Once it dries, it's almost impossible to remove. I let it sit on the paint for about 45 minutes with the plastic on it, and then I come back and I begin to scrape it off. Now look how easily this is being scraped off. This tells me that the paint that was applied, and I could tell there was about two or three coats of paint because there was one color white, there was some blue, there was some dark gray. So, I mean, it's two or three coats of paint on there. I could tell that this was furniture paint. So the person did use the right paint on it. If it wasn't furniture paint, it would be so hard to get off. But because it was furniture paint, it's coming right up. This makes my job so much easier. And what I mean by furniture paint is that it's either clay, chalk, or mineral paint. It's not a latex wall paint. To remove any of the leftover citrus strip, I'm using um, clean strips after wash. You could also use mineral spirits, but if I had to choose between the two, I would always go with after wash. It just makes the job so much easier. You don't have to really scrub too much. You just kind of wipe it and it comes right off. Both of them have an awful odor, mineral spirits and clean strips, so you can wear your respirator or um, make sure that you're in a well-ventilated area or outdoors. So by looking at this back here, I can see that I have a thin sheet of veneer. I still got some paint there, but we'll hit that with the sander really quick. But you can see it right here. This is not a full piece of wood. You know, it doesn't go all the way down to here. No, the veneer stops right here. So this is pretty darn thin. I just bought these Serious Grit sanding pads or sanding discs on um, Amazon. They were way more money than the normal ones I buy. There's only 50, but they have the grits that I want and they're supposed to last a lot longer. So because I know that this veneer is really, really thin, I am not gonna use a 60 grit. No way. That would just tear this whole thing apart. And it doesn't have any more shellac or any kind of sealer on it because we stripped all that off. So we're going to want to start somewhere a lot higher. No 80, no 100. 120 might even be a little bit rough. But because I still have some of that paint left on the back, I am going to start with the 120. Then I'll move my way up to 150 and I probably won't even need 180. Um, but we have to be really careful when we're sanding. Here's my sander, but I also have a sanding pad on it. And then we're gonna attach our new disc to the sanding pad. I think that helps. That sanding pad softens it up and really it does help with not blowing through the veneer or adding too much pressure, just kind of softens it. I don't have a vacuum hooked up to it to get rid of all the dust I always wear my mask I have a respirator make sure you get the right one this one also is good for chemicals I got it on Amazon and I want to show you in real time the speed I, it's kind of slow but not too slow I never want to sit in one spot for too long because then you'll have unevenness in the color and you will blow through that veneer and when I say blow through the veneer, I mean put too much pressure down on your sander, which sands one spot for a little bit too long, and then you go through the veneer onto what's underneath, which is plywood. 
often I hear people talk about, oh, it's not real wood, it's just veneer. Well, veneer is real wood, it sure is. It's just a very thin slice of a really nice wood. It's a thin slice of really nice wood glued onto a piece of plywood or a poplar or something cheaper. But that doesn't mean that it's less value. Most of the furniture, and not all of it, but most of it in the U.S. has a sheet of veneer on it somewhere. And back to the sanding, I am being very careful on the edges. Um, it's really easy on the edges to blow through that veneer. So when you're on the edges, don't sit there for too long. That's something to be very careful of. So what is the main goal of sanding? Why am I sanding it after I've stripped it? It's because I want there to be a really nice, even colored finish. The more even I can get it, the better it's going to look once I put my stain on it. So I can see light spots. I can see dark spots. That's usually just the color in the wood, those dark spots. But sometimes there's parts where you know there's water rings or some water damage or burn marks those things I want to get rid of with my sander so I'm going up in grits now I've sanded most of the top with the 120 now I'm using the 150 grit and I'm doing this because I don't want to keep hitting it with a really low grit or we will blow through that veneer so now going through the 150 and I've taken most of the imperfections off now I can just kind of perfect the color. Now anything sitting on top, any of that discolored, I can usually get. And if if there's some really dark spots on your furniture, maybe it came from um, your, your chemical stripper, sometimes that happens with citrus strip, you could also put some oxalic acid on it and leave that overnight and that'll kind of like bleach your your wood and take those dark spots out. Another really obvious way to see that there is a, a piece of veneer on these sorts of pieces is look from, you could see it from this angle, look at the trim around the top. That's a totally different piece of wood than the sheet of veneer on top. So how do you know when you're done sanding? Well, just look at it. Are, are most of the dark spots gone? Are you getting probably as even as you can? Yeah, then you're done. And then for the trim, I use my mouse. I have a surf prep sanding pad and I just go do a quick once over. I'm not trying to take anything off. Just make sure there's no gook or gunk on it. And then when I'm done with that, I need to look the piece over one more time because that's going to determine what type of stain I'm using. While it does look good, it's not perfect. I couldn't get it perfect without blowing through that veneer. Now that it's sanded, I can actually add my stain. And for this one, I'm going to use Dixie Belle's No Paint Gel Stain in Golden Ash. If I had a really, really even colored piece on top, then I would be able to use a regular stain. But because I don't, this has really great coverage. It sits on top rather than penetrates like a regular stain penetrates. And because the lip of my piece, the edges, is not the same kind of wood that is on top with the veneer, I'm gonna be able to match them up a little bit better. They're not gonna be exact because they're two different woods, but it's gonna be the best option. Otherwise, I'll have to paint the lip. And for this piece, I want that lip to show and I want it to be this, um, this rich brown color. When I'm applying my gel stain, I apply it in rows. I start from the front and I go all the way to the back. I wouldn't go from the back to the front because I don't want to get it on my sweater. So that's the reason I'm starting at the front. And I try to keep an even amount on the piece. If you glob it on one side and don't glob it on the other side, you're going to have one side that's darker and one side that's lighter. So be careful when you're applying it that you're just kind of using a consistent amount. And you can use an applicator pad, you can use a rag, whatever you feel like. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. I wouldn't use a brush. And whatever you're going to use has to be something that you will throw away because it's oil-based. Um, you're not going to be able to wash this out. And if you want it to be darker, then you're going to apply more coats once it dries. Wait a couple hours, maybe between two and four hours, and apply your second coat or your third coat. And if you want it to be lighter, just apply one. But be careful, make sure that you're wiping back so you don't leave any streaks on it because it does dry on the top 
And if you leave the streaks on there, the streaks will dry right on there. And if you're enjoying this video, I would love it if you hit that like button and let me know and consider subscribing. It really helps my channel out. And look at how it takes the trim. It just, it just brought it right back to life. And just a reminder of what we were working with when we first started the piece. And here's what it looks like today. Now this is after three coats of the no paint gel stain in golden ash. In about seven days, I'll apply a water-based top coat to this, but here it is for now. And I would say to get this finish, the most important thing is patience, taking your time and giving it a lot of TLC during that sanding process. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.